Yo, what's up, everybody? Yo, come on in, man. Let me know where you're coming in from. Let me know um, international people. Make sure y'all let me know where you're coming in from. Y'all read the title of the post. You see what it is. I'm going to let y'all get in here, and then I'm going to go in. What's up, Fort Worth? J.D., Ashton Presswell, what's up, H-Town, Deborah Green, Lafayette, Louisiana, Stephen McCaster, Newark, New Jersey, what up, homie, Frank Guzman just joined us, Timothy, what up, Atlanta, El Dorado, Arkansas, Keith, what's up, homie, Keith Coggins, yeah, what's up, uh, Loon Lock, Loke, Arkansas, Walter Griggs, Mississippi, 662. Eddie Gaden, Jr. Newport, what's up, Jr.? What's up, Atlanta, Sterling Smith? Shotgun Remy, what up? Detroit in the building. Darion Pouncey, Shreveport, Louisiana. Jim, uh, Mac, what is that, Mac Live? I miss where you're from. Uh, I see Charleston, South Carolina in the building. Mike Big, Chicago. Uh, Biloxi, Mississippi in the building. Umar X, Galveston, Texas, Lancaster, South Carolina, Oscar. I see you, Jesse. Calgary, Canada, that's what's up. Uh, Khalid O'Brien, what up? Yeah, so, um, yeah, we got a lot of catching up to do. I see uh, Valero, California in the building. Daryl, I got you. I see Vegas, Rachel. Uh, Tara, Washington, D.C., I see you. Baxton Hill, Gary, Indiana. Reginald Williams, Galveston. Sam, what's up, Miami? From Miami to Detroit. Detroit in the house again with Amir Sadiq. Uh, Troy Major, St. Louis. I see Charleston, South Carolina in the house. Desi Ferguson. Uh, O.J. Thompson. Texarkana, right there on the borderline of Texas and Arkansas. So let me go in on this, y'all. Y'all keep on letting me know where, you, where you're coming in from. Um, and I'm going to come back and, and I'll engage y'all uh, after I post. But just 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 a little uh, catching up. Uh, yeah, so a um, family member of mine told me, a family member that's in law enforcement told me that I'm being watched. I'm on the so-called watch list. So I'm officially being investigated uh, for what? Because of my post on social media. So they mad because I'm giving y'all this information. Boy, that's cold-blooded. That's cold-blooded when you live in a world where people respect a lie and buffoonery and clowning uh, more than they respect the truth and, you know, progression, people being up uplifted. It's funny how dudes can go put on wigs and makeup, dresses, and act like women, and people just get a kick out of it. They just laugh to the little poor hearts of content. And what's sad is that a lot of women follow these dudes. And they don't even know that they're contributing to, to the uh, emasculation of, uh, of black males, primarily. Because that's who I see wearing these dresses and stuff of black males, wearing this makeup and, and, these, and these, these wigs and stuff, these black, black males. And they think it's funny. Oh, it's just so funny. It's just funny, funny, funny. Everybody want to laugh. Uh, but, you know... I like to laugh too, don't get me wrong. But there's a lot of things that I can find human in uh, rather than seeing a, a man uh, portray himself as a woman. Portray himself as something other than uh, being a ma masculine. Being what he was put on this earth to be. Uh, I can, it, there's a whole lot of things out there that's funny. But 
You know, dude acting like a woman ain't never been funny to me. I just don't see the humor in it. And a lot of these women got boys. Hey, I hate to bust your bubble, y'all, but I'm telling you, you know, uh, don't sacrifice your son manhood for your own entertainment. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you some hard love. You know, I love y'all to death. I love you to death. I love y'all to death, women. But I'm going to tell you the truth. I ain't going to be like some of these suckers that just want to get in your panties and going to tell you anything that you want to hear. I'm going to tell you the truth. And that's some truth for your ass. Now, so they mad at me because I'm giving out the truth. So here goes some more truth for your ass. You see this shirt? I'm still wearing it, baby. And I'm still talking about it. So if y'all want to wear it, go to my website, willyd.com. Go to the store. Hit the button and get yours. That's how it's going down. Now something, a uh, couple things in the news. Okay, you got Donald Trump. Donald Trump finally showed his, uh, released his tax returns, but only after Rachel Maddow was scheduled to uh, release his tax returns. Rachel Maddow from MSNBC. She was about to expose him, and she did expose him today. So he probably left some things out of his tax returns. Uh, it still just baffles me how people fail for it. I don't care what, whatever you think about dude or whatever you thought about his opponents or whatever, just fundamentally, why is it that all of us are forced to release our tax returns. We got to. We got to. Uh, you know, we have to put it out there that, uh, you know, if, 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 if we're running for a certain position, if we're, if we're being uh, axed, you know, that we have to put that out there. But you're talking about, like, be, becoming the president of the United States, that's one of the, you know, that's, that's one of the necessary things to show honesty when you're running for president of the United States. Show your tax returns. Let's, let's see what you're spending your money on because it's often said that uh, don't tell me what you care about. Show me uh, how you spend your money. Show me where the money went. Show me your budget and I'll tell you what you care about. So uh, seeing those tax returns was, will, will tell you a lot about a person. So that's why Americans have always wanted to see those tax returns. But voted for them anyway. I don't trust them. I never trusted them and I still don't trust them. And like I said from the beginning, before I heard that I was on some watch list, I'm going to get that sucker hell for the next four years or eight years. I have a long here in office. I'm going to give them hell. Whether it be Another month, four years, eight years, whatever his time is. If he die, if he have a heart attack on the job, I'm going to give his ass hell. Why he having a heart attack? In the, if he going to the hospital, I'm still not going to get my foot off his neck. I'm going to be praying that he die. That's how I'm rolling. I'm going to give him hell just like he gave Barack Obama hell for eight years. Him and every other Republican that I know. Gave Barack hell for eight years flat. Now all of a sudden, the shoe is on the other foot. And then now they want harmony. Now they want to say it's our president. If you don't like it, leave the country and all that type of talk. Yeah, I don't like it and I ain't leaving. And I'm going to put it in your face just like you did us. That's what I'm going to do. Something else in the news. LeVar Ball. The father of Lonzo Ball, who plays for UCLA, plays basketball for UCLA. So he's been under a lot of criticism lately because of his hands-on approach with dealing with his son. His son is a basketball phenom. He's going to go 1-2 in the draft. Now, a lot of people is taking exception to how he's uh, these comments that he's been making, saying that his son is uh, better than Steph Curry and how he would have 
beating Michael Jordan on a one-on-one -on -one and all these things. In fact, Le'Veon Bell, who plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers, running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers, made a comment saying, you know, joking, saying, oh, man, you averaged two points. You can't, couldn't beat Michael Jordan, da 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 Okay, I think most people believe that Dude was, went a little overboard when he said he could beat Jordan on a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, we get that. But Levy Young, Jordan ain't the dude to defend, man. If you want to defend somebody, defend somebody that's honorable. Defend somebody who would defend you. Defend somebody who, the, who, who, loved, who loved the people. You know, the people love him. Make, defend somebody who loved the people back. Don't defend a sucker. Don't defend a chump. You don't defend a taker, somebody who's just a user. Don't defend him. Okay, just say, yeah, well, I don't think so, and leave it alone. But don't try to go in on personal attacks on this dude on behalf of Michael Jordan, out of all people. You know, I don't know if you just signed a contract with Nike or something or signed something to wear his shoes or whatever. I don't know. But, hey, man, you've been all right with me until that statement. You want to defend somebody. Don't defend that dude. Find somebody else. It's a lot of honorable men out there. Find somebody else to defend. But I'm going to tell you why they really mad at the man. You see, dude is hands on. He said that he won a billion dollars for his three sons. A billion dollar shoe deal for his three sons. And of course, people took exception to that. Yeah, a billion dollars is a lot of money. But hell, LeBron signed a, a, a billion dollar deal in 2015. Uh, I think uh, Tiger signed like a half a billion dollar deal, a billion dollar deal. So it ain't like it's unheard of. And even if it was unheard of, it's the first time for everything. Why not get a billion dollars when any kind of deal you sign, if your son, if your son turns out to be a top guy, Nike, Reebok, Under Armour, they're going to make uh, a trillion dollars off the deal. Why not get a billion dollars? Get all you can get. I, I'm, tell, I'm talking to all the athletes out there. Man, get all you can get from these chumps, from these teams, because they're going to get all they can get from you. And when you done, when you can't run that ball no more, when you can't catch that ball no more, when you can't uh, t make that tackle, you can't kick that ball, you can't throw that ball, they're going to kick your ass to the curb. They're going to stop returning your calls just like that. They're going to go from t calling you the greatest thing in the world and being at your every beck and call so when you make that phone call, man, that phone going to ring, 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 ring. It's going to go unanswered. And you're going to start getting assistance when you used to be able to get the owner of the team on the phone just like that. The coach on the phone just like that. Any recruit just like that. Any agent just like that. That phone going to stop ringing. So you damn right. Damn Skippy, LeVar, get everything you can for your sons. And when you, get, when you sign that contract, get all you can when you sign that contract too. Because they're going to get all they can get out of you. And when they get through using you up, they're going to go to the next one. And then the next one. And then the next one. Get all you can, get, you can from them suckers. Get everything you can get from them. They mad at him because he said if he don't get the deal that he want for his sons, he don't get the shoe deal that he want for his sons, that he's going to start his own shoe company. Now, I heard some people barking at that. Oh, man, it's going to be a one-off type thing. It's going to be, you know, he's going to put it out there and nobody's going to hear about it ever again in a couple of years and da-da-da-da. See, that's the kind of top thinking they want you to have. They want you to think you can't do it on your own. Hell, Nike did it on their own. The owners of Reebok did it. The owners of Omar, when Omar all came into the game, everybody said Nike got it on lock. Reebok got it on lock. Adidas got it on lock. Here come Armour all. And now they're a major player in the game. So if they can do it, why he can't do it? You got to stop just trying to be the talent. Stop just being consumers. 
Man, go out there and do your own thing. If that man think he can do it, why not pat him on the back and give him some information and give him some information? Say, hey man, hell yeah, man, do it. If you think you can do it, go do it. I tell you what, if his son do turn out, his sons do turn out to be some of the greatest players in the game, it ain't gonna be that hard to go do it. Cause trust you me, when you when you at the top, everybody wanna get any kind of piece of you that they can, and them major corporations especially. They'd rather take a little piece of some of that money than not, not get none of that money at all. So you damn skippy, LeVar. Go out there and get everything you can for your sons. And I'm going to tell you, like I said, the reason why they don't like what he's saying is because he a black man. Straight up, he a black man in America, and you ain't supposed to be cocky like that. First of all, you ain't, and also... You ain't supposed to be involved in your son's life like that. People always say, well, where's the father? Where, you know, every time you turn on TV, I want to thank my mother, my mother. Thank my mother, my mother, my mother. Like, I'm, like the mama just had the damn baby all by herself. Like daddy ain't never, ain't, ain't, ain't did nothing. Ain't played no role at all. Here's a father that's involved, directly involved with raising his boys up. In the way that he wanted them to go. Raising them to be great athletes. Raising them to be great men. Great human beings. And they want him to all of a sudden. Now that they're in the limelight. Everybody wants him to be quiet. When he's gotten them to the point that they're at right now. Now they want daddy to take a back seat and get out of the way. You know why? Because they don't really like. The truth be told. They don't like that strong role model, that strong, especially black male role model. They didn't do that when uh, Archie Manning went out there and raised his sons to be great athletes and his son, he was bragging on his sons being the best. They didn't say nothing about Archie Manning. Oh, but they had plenty to say about Richard Williams when he went out there and raised the best, the two, the two greatest athletes in the world had number one and two uh, uh, best tennis players in the world came from the same semen. One and two best tennis players in the world. But they had plenty to say about how he was raising his kids and what he did to make his kids number one. How he was all involved. He needs to get out of the way, step back, da da da. That's what they want you to do. They want you to get out the way. Raise your kids, get out the way. Not even really raise your kids. They just want you to have them. Then they can take them and do whatever they want to do with them or do to them. But let's say in this situation, he raised the kids, get them there, make them uh, these great human beings, these great ball players. Now they want to take them and then be able to do whatever they want to do with them. They want daddy to get out of the way. You know why? Because they don't want that protection. They don't want them boys to have that protection. They know daddy going to look out for them. They know daddy going to be there for them. They know daddy ain't going to take advantage of them. They know daddy ain't going to let nobody hurt them. So they want them to get out of the way so they can take advantage of them. The scouts, the coaches, the team owners, the agents, all of them, even some of them journalists out there, they all in on it. They want them to just get on out the way. Go out there, make a whole bunch of money, get daddy out the way so they can go out there and be reckless, make a bunch of mistakes so they can have something to write negative about them. Oh, because daddy wasn't there. They can write something bad about them. They can uh, let them get out there and be reckless and, you know, go lay their hands on some girl or get drunk and wreck their car, maybe kill themselves and injure themselves so they can have something to say, talk about. They want to be able to take them and take advantage, and take advantage of them on that, with their money. The accountants, the agents, the vultures just want to get them boys. They want daddy out of the way so they can take advantage of his boys. That's why they want him out of the way. That's the truth. What's wrong with all, it, it's a trip. It tripped me out how people in America always, well, where the black fathers? Where the black father? Then when you have a black father that's involved, that's hands on, oh, he's going too far. Adrian Peterson whoop his boy. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have whipped, whipped my son with a switch. But goddamn, man, he didn't fucking kill the boy. He didn't pistol whip him. Okay. Uh, give him a couple days off, but don't try to end the man's career. Lock the man up. 
for disciplining his boy, giving him some direction so that he won't end up like some of these other youngsters out here, dead or in jail. They don't want you to do no kind of discipline because they want to be able to do the discipline. They, they, they talk that. All they do, they talk. They talk a good game. They say they want you to discipline and where's the daddy? Where's the father? But then when the daddy there and the father there and he's doing what he's supposed to be doing and he's involved, then they're going to try to figure out some kind of way to uh, minimize your authority because they really don't want you to raise your boys right. They want you to be, they want you to get out the picture so your boys can be reckless so they can go out there and kill them or uh, so they can go out there and sell some dope, kill somebody. They can lock them up. They can kill them, do whatever they want to do with them. So they can get strung out on drugs. They want your boys strung out on drugs. They want them on drugs. They want your daughters to be on the streets uh, uh, selling, selling, selling their bodies. They want her on that alcohol. They want her in the nightclub. They want her uh, five babies by five different daddies. They, they want that. That's, that's how they keep control. It's hard to fight it when, that, when we falling into the trap. It's hard to fight it. Because you're giving them ammunition every time you do it. Every time you play into their hand, you're giving them more and more ammunition. But trust you me, they don't want that. They don't want that righteousness. They don't want that wholesome upbringing. They don't want that fatherly love. They don't want you to get that. They don't want that. Because that's how they maintain control. And that's how you get people who are underprivileged and poor to vote against their best interest. That's how you do it. So, LeVar, uh, LeVar Ball, I'm with you, man. I stand with you. And as far as Charles Barkley speaking against you, everybody know what type of dude Charles Barkley is. We all know Charles Barkley is a sucker. He's an idiot. Everybody know that. Don't worry about him. The dude, he can't speak when it comes to winning. He ain't a winner. He, you can't, don't, don't worry about that dude. He's not a champion. He's never won a championship. The reason why he's never won a championship because he was too damn selfish, too self-absorbed. And I respect everything you said about the comments that you made about his, his children. He got on TV and talked about his damn two dogs, but he won't talk about his two children. Then he going to tell you how to raise your kids, tell you to step back. He wants you to be like him. Step back, get out the picture so your kids can go astray like his kids and went astray and hate him. His kids hate his guts because he's not involved. And he wants you to do the same thing like he's doing because he's not involved. Charles Barkley is a sucker. He's an idiot. He ain't the type of dude that, nobody, that no real man would ever want to be like. That's it. He got some money, but it's quite possible in America to have money and still be a bum. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave y'all with this, just like you were talking about. LeVar Ball was, was being interviewed by some guy. I can't remember the guy's name, but he was being interviewed, and LeVar said, I'm not, why should I back up? And I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He said, why should I back off? You know, I brought them in. I'm the reason why they are where they are. When everything is gone, he's like, I'm going to still be here. So, so to add to that, I will say this. When all the, when the lights go off, when the fame fades, when the money is gone, when the groupies move over, to the next up and coming star. When all of the hang ons are gone, the agents stop returning the phone calls, the accounts start forwarding your messages, ignoring your messages. Family are gonna still be there. So I respect that, man. I respect everything you said. And I respect every man out there who do the job that we call father.
called fatherhood. I love it, man. I love y'all, man. Y'all keep taking care of them babies. Keep loving on them babies. Keep protecting them babies. Stay free. Stay alive as long as you can. Because you can't raise babies from the pen. And you damn sure can't raise them from the grave. No more talk.